But for me, last year, it was a total sh sh It was so bad. Okay, well, so this hobby is as beautiful as it can seem, like having crazy baby ass hashings, crazy holdbacks, you breed, like you make money out of breeding animals and like those animals are beautiful, like the genetics, everything's so nice, seems so like, you know, sunshine and rainbows, but uh, in reality, it's much harder than it seems. Um, there's so many, so many different things that can happen like in a collection. It is nuts. You can have, you know, various sorts of infections. You can have um, uh, equipment breakdown, equipment failures. You can have, you know, um, theater shortage. Uh, you know, there's so many different things like breeding issues. You can have slugs. You can, there's hundreds of different things that can go wrong. I've experienced a lot of them. I've had mites when I first started, like, a couple of years back, I treated them. It was a lot, a lot to, you know, uh, get through. But with the quantity of animal I had back then, it was not that bad. Now, every single time I bring a new animal in, I treat them and isolate them in like their own little quarantine where I, I mix everything and I, and I make sure that there's nothing else. So whenever something comes into the collection, I know for, for sure that, you know, I'm not gonna get swarmed in mice and anything. That's one thing. Then you learn with our eyes, you know, you make sure not to buy sick animals. And if an animal gets sick, you quarantine them very, very quickly. You treat them, you go see effects. There's so many things now that you can do in this area. And I've had some animals that were sick before too. That happens in every single collection, you know? You can, you buy new animals and you know, with the stress and temperature, you never know what can happen. There, there's so many different things. Like we've, you, you guys seen in previous videos, I've had males that really did not really want to breed and stop eating and you have you know you have to be creative on how to make your animal go back on food let him gain let him or her gain weight and then try and pray for some breeding and then you know you can you can overuse a male in breeding and burn him out technically for like too many females there's so many things that can go wrong but I will talk for like my experience and something that I'm really you know, the people that are close to me know more about this. You might have seen it a little bit on social medias. But for me, last year, it was a total shock. It was so bad. Um, I managed to have like some really cool animals, you know, I've had really cool stuff last year. But out of like, I'll get the numbers later, I'll go into the numbers at the end of the video. But my percentage of slugs last year was insane it makes no sense like honestly one clutch out of four had good eggs all the rest had only slugs i had like i can name you like right at the top of my head a few clutches that slugged out completely cinnamon red stripe yellow belly clown to chocolate hypo female 10 slugs head monsoon to clown female seven slugs orange dream yellow belly bongo male to banana and she female nine slugs um Pewter, Lesser, Leopard, Hat and Answer, Puss at Pipe to Double Hat and Answer, G-Strike, 13 slugs. Uh, Cinnamon and Restrike, It'll Be the Clown to Enchi Pastel Hat Clown, 14 slugs. You know, and it goes on and on and on last season. It was so bad. Then, I was realizing I had so many, so many, so many slugs. I was having a female, having an ovulation, I was not even excited yet, because I knew what I would end up with. Slugs, and then slugs, and slugs, and slugs. Slugs are part of your journey through ball python breeding. You're gonna have some, you're gonna fail at some point. It will happen. Either it's gonna be you, you're gonna use a male that's too young, uh, you're gonna have you know too high temperatures, too low temperatures, too much stress on the female. There's so many different, not a lot of flux. There's so many different reasons why you can get slugs. And I'm not gonna get into you know like the real scientific uh, scientific um, you know technicalities of why you get slugs and how to prevent it and I'm just gonna talk you know about the right mindset to go into it I don't feel like there's a real good video about that on YouTube or if there is I have I've never seen one but uh, for me it was really really tough from you know a passionate perspective to hit so many slugs 
Like I had something like 20 something clutches last season and I only ended up keeping three animals from my breeding. Three animals. Can you imagine like maybe four actually? So that's really, really tough. Not only like money wise, that's for sure. I, I might've lost like 50 grand last season. That's like low key 50 grand for sure. But not only that, that's at least 10 to 20 all backs pull back animals that are like priceless because you can't really buy them anywhere. Try to buy a chocolate restaurant, it'll belly double hat hypo clown female. If, the, if someone's going to sell it, it's going to be for high, high bucks. And you know, these are all animals that are really, really tough to come by. And you can't really, you can't afford not to have them. So you open up drawers, you're all excited for your female slugs. It happens. Second female, a couple of weeks later, open up your drawers, slugs. Well, geez. That hurts. Okay. This this female, I'm really excited. Next one, two weeks, really excited. Open up the door, slugs again. Now, that hurts. Another roar. Oh, good eggs. Uh, put the light on them, no veins. So that happened so many times last season. Honestly, I had a I had a friend that came over and he had to remove slugs from one of the females. Because I, I was so over it, I couldn't, you know, compel myself to remove the slugs. It, it was so heartbreaking. To remove slugs from that chocolate hypo female with 10 slugs. 10 good eggs would have been crazy, you know. So, what type of mindset do you have to put yourself in to go through this? Well, you know, this whole industry, like all of this, the reason why we do this, the reason why we buy really expensive rack, really expensive animals, we have so many projects, we buy like super expensive males. Why is it? To make money? If it, if it would have been to make money last year, I would have quit. Because honestly, like it was not a profitable year. I was able to manage to buy those two racks from what I sell. But investment wise, like it was it was not nice. Like I was able to buy a couple animals here and there, but it was not, it was far from what I was what would have expected. So, you know, it's really tough on yourself to, you know, see all of your efforts br being break down like instantly. Because the thing is, you gotta remember, it's not like you have six clutches a year. You only have one. And that's if she goes. My chocolate hypo girl, she's not going this year. Probably not. Might go next year. So not only have I missed from getting slugs, but this year she's like, you know, uh, recuperating. So she's not gonna go this year probably. So I'm technically missing two years out of this female. Where, you know, it's, it's female sitting there and it's a good female with the males I have, it could be amazing. So you, you gotta go through and think about why you do all this? Why do I do this? I want to be the first one. I want to be. I want to produce the world first. I want to. I want to have the craziest, sickest animals first, and you know, make a big bucks out of it. Is that it for me? Is that my priority? It might be for you. For me, it wasn't. For me, my main priority was to focus on my goals and enjoy my animals. I had a couple holdbacks. I love them. They're really, really nice. I bought animals. I'm excited. My animals are growing. I'm excited. I am planning for next year. I'm excited. And this is what, you know, made me like, this, this is the reason why I was able to go through one disgusting year as last year was. Uh, the mindset of, I know that there's good coming. So, well, yesterday I was filming, my girlfriend's not here with me. Um, so I'm filming with the tripod and I got a call did not uh, realize I got a call and the video ended up so that's why I changed shirt but anyways shout out to Jessica Buka. Um so what I was technically saying is that what made me still interested and excited into this hobby was all the rest it's not only about making sales making new holdbacks having new animals and pushing collection always further that's one part too that's what excites me the most to be totally honest with you the outcome of what you can do and you know having newer animals and newer genetics and working th towards you know an end goal that's the best of it but it's not all of it. for me i see i personally see small success as what like can drive me forward in an entire year so you know having clutches your female is going to lay once per year you have an ovulation you have copulations you have like every single other things but these little things are what excites well personally what excites me 
Like seeing a compilation, I'm, I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see a female of the lady. For me, when a female goes back on food and start pounding and I grab her up and I see like how thick she is and her colors and, and everything else, that's, that's for me, that's something that, you know, encouraged me to keep going forward. So even though you had, even though I had so many failures last season, those little things, females that were eating, females that were, you know, shedding and being more and more beautiful, that's what really made me able to, you know, get through all the, you know, the difficulties that, that I encountered last season. And, you know, from that experience, I will never do the same mistakes again, obviously. And I hope that this experience on my side will help you too, to be like more conscious about every single little things that you have going on in your collection. Because this is so important. I can't stress this enough. It is so important to be all over it. Check everything all the time. Okay, so to talk about a little bit why all this happened last year for me. Well, you know, I had a uh, air conditioning failure and the temperature rise like way, way, way too high in my ambient room. It was at, like 27, 28 or something. Like it was really, really high in the room. Plus the heating. The temperatures in the bin, like I wasn't careful enough and it just went way too high and the sperm of the males wasn't good at all. You would say that's a rookie mistake. It was 100%, but rookie mistakes happen like to big guys. And you know, I've seen big guys shipping animals and that's rookie mistakes. Like that's not good. So even if you're like, you know, a newbie in, in the game or even if you're like more advanced, you're never, uh, you know, protected from anything. Like, what I'm trying to say is, you have to be so careful about everything. You gotta look at everything. Look at your um, thermostats once a day. Every single time you come in your room, you check the temperatures. You look at your animals. You observe where they are. If I come in and I see all my animals in the front of the bin, I know there's something wrong. My snakes are not always in the front. If there's in the front, that's because the back is too hot. You can have something that goes wrong. You have a, a, a heat cable failure or a heat tape failure, and this happens. And you know, check your animals when you when you clean them, touch them, feel how they are. They cold? Are they too hot? Is it too dry? Is it too you know? Uh, uh, is it too wet? And if you have like you know, uh, if you ever had our eyes, when you pick up your animal and you're not careful, and you might have had it might have had our eye or an eye or something, and then you transmit it to the rest of your collection. You really got to be like careful to every little signs of something wrong in your collection this when you're super alert and you look at everything you're going to be able to you know make that little gap of difference because you can feed you can clean your animals you can breed everything properly but if you're not super conscious about how your collection is going and how your room how your uh, you know equipment is working if you're not conscious about that and you're not super alert and you know check these things very very frequently can go wrong and i'm the proof of that i did not and the scrap it totally butchered my last year's season so try to be careful with that all right here we have it guys beautiful hat and answer female bred to a enchi hat and answer and oh that hurts look at that wow okay what do we have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen slugs and two boobs. Can you imagine that? Really, really, really bad. Yeah, we'll candle these and see how they look. But that's one clutch. Just lay it there. And here's the other one. This one looks a little better. Yeah, a little better. You know what, guys? Actually, uh, Check down in the description of this video and I will put uh, the ratio of like slugs that I had last year versus eggs and infertile eggs. Uh, I need to go through my uh, my sheets and it's pretty late right now. Go down in the description and all of the infos of my last year's seasons are going to be there.